Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of request. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel and for so many likes. The first story, my manager lost his job and wife. The second story, new boss demands I take my break correctly to the minute. The third story, man with anger issues decides to break check Uber. On to the first story, my manager accused me of theft. He got fired. This is a long one. Way back in the early 2000s, I worked at Blockbuster Video in the UK. It wasn't my first job, but I was still in high school when I started, so it was near as D. I had a pretty good working relationship with my boss and quickly moved up the ranks to one of the deputy managers. I was the person the manager would call to cover shifts, and honestly, unless I had a really good reason, I always did the extra because I actually really liked the job. I'm a film nerd, so I loved spending my working days talking to customers about movies. It also didn't hurt that I could rent any movie anytime for free. So this one particular Saturday we were slammed. Three staff members called in sick. We had a big new release movie that week, and we had a big computer game release on the Friday too, so it was manic. Halfway through my shift, a guy comes in and says he bought a game the week before from the store and that he wanted a refund. He said I had served him, but hadn't given him a receipt. Now, I did remember servicing the guy, but couldn't remember what he bought, and frankly, even though it's automatic to give receipts, I couldn't guarantee I had. The problem was, that specific game was the only copy we apparently had. Our inventory said it was in store, but this guy had it, so somehow it had left the store without being processed. Either it had been stolen by this guy, it was some kind of error on my part, or I had actively given it to him and pocketed the money. To be clear, these are options from an objective POV. I never stole from that job, so I definitely didn't do the last. My manager was working with me, so he refunded the guy, took the game back, and then for the rest of the shift didn't speak to me once. As we closed the store that night, the manager took me into the office and proceeded to accuse me of stealing. Without evidence, he said I had sold the game and pocketed the money. I obviously denied the claim. Things got heated and it ended with him telling me to hand in my notice. Two weeks. So I did. I was heartbroken because I loved the job and I knew I was innocent. I may have given it by accident, but I would never knowingly steal. So two weeks later, my notice period is up, and on my last shift, coincidentally, the area manager comes in. Now, I had quite a good relationship with the AM. I'd been hired by them originally, and it was frequently noted by them that I always seemed to be on shift when they came in. They asked me how I was, and I said that I was sad that I was leaving. They didn't know this, so asked why. I explained the situation, and they immediately went to the office. Half an hour later, I got a call to go to the office. The AM was sat with the CCTV footage from the day the man said he'd bought the game. In the video, it showed me serving him. Then as he left, he had a chat with the store manager. The manager was working in new inventory, ready to put out on the shelf. For some reason, the manager turned his back on the customer for a few moments, and as plain as day, the customer reached over the counter, grabbed something and left. The AM assumed this was the game. Well, the manager was called in. He first asked why I had given in my notice, when the accusations against me deserved a meeting with the AM and my immediate dismissal if I was guilty. The manager just stuttered something about not wanting to make a big deal. Then the AM asked the manager to explain what happened in the CCTV after showing it. The manager just sat quietly. Well anyway, the AM asked me at this point to rescind my notice, which I did, though I cannily asked for a few days extra paid holiday because I felt embarrassed by the theft accusation and the AM agreed. The AM then said that they would be taking the month's worth of CCTV footage to have it looked over because this act of negligence by the manager was a cause for concern. The blood ran from the manager's face at this point, but nothing further was said. I finished my shift and walked out with the AM to enjoy my week off. Three days later, I got a phone call from the AM asking if I could meet him at the store that day. I obliged. When I arrived, the AM took me to the office and told me there had been a situation. During the CCTV checks, it had become apparent that the manager had been using the store for other reasons. On a number of nights, over the course of the month, he'd closed the store. Then after the staff had gone, he'd invited people in. One night he'd held a poker game in the staff room. Later we found out he'd been using the money from the tills to cover his losses and putting through refund notices to cover it. And on three other occasions, he was seen bringing in women in his office. The manager was also married. Well, the manager was automatically suspended while there was an investigation and the reason I was brought in was to be asked to run the store in his absence. After the investigation was complete, it turned out the manager had been giving thousands of refunds per month and falsifying who gave the refunds so it didn't look suspicious. This had gone on for years in multiple stores that he'd worked in. 
So because he accused me of something I didn't do, he lost his job and his marriage, and I got a promotion with a lovely raise. The second story is, you want me to take my breaks on time? Sure. Some quick explanation. I work for a huge company in the customer services department. My job is mainly emails, so a customer will call, speak to a colleague who will create an issue form and send it to the correct warehouse. I sometimes have to take calls when it's urgent or serious. Because of this, I can't always take my assigned breaks bang on time. This will be important later. Last week, my manager left for a new job, which sucks because he was awesome. And the guy covering for him, let's say if someone dropped a car on his head, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. Anyways, right off the bat, on the very first day, new manager, M, starts barking orders. I already knew him as a very good friend colleague worked under him for months. I had previously spent 30 minutes talking to said colleague because M made her cry and hate the job. I used to carry out some extra jobs for the previous manager, but something had happened and I no longer wanted to do it. I informed my old manager, who understood. There were two of us doing this job. Let's call this colleague C. M basically questions people like it's an interrogation. I've gone as far as to say to people in passing, if I fart, I swear he'll expect me to tell him how it smells. M told me off on the second day for not taking my breaks at the correct time. I tried to explain that this isn't always possible. If I get an issue form 5 minutes before my break and it takes 20 minutes to fix, I'll just go for my break after and still have the same amount of time. M, that's not acceptable. You are expected to be available to take any issues outside your allocated break times. Me, I understand, but again. M, enough, I've told you already. Let this be the last time I hear this. Okay? The following day, M approached C and told her she's expected to carry out the old extra task, and I am too. C, has M told you about extra task? Me, no, what's up? C, he wants us both to do... Me, yeah, I'm not doing it. I told the previous manager I was dropping it. C, okay. Five minutes later, M messages me. M, C tells me you don't want to do the extra task. Why? Me, I have my reasons for not wanting to take on the responsibility. C, then please explain them to me as I am making a reasonable management request for you to support your team. Me, sure, I don't want to because it's not part of my role. I'm not obligated, I'm underappreciated, and I get nothing extra from it, and a few other private reasons I don't want to discuss. M, wow, well thank you for the support, OP. You're required to follow any reasonable management request given to you. I'll pick this up formally with you. You'll not be required to do anything that's not, as you put it, part of your job role from now on. Thank you. Me, you never formally asked me to. You told C to tell me. Couple more things were said, but not relevant. So yesterday, I get a call come through. Huge issue. I look at the time, and it's 2.20 p.m. My break is at 2.30, but I take the call. Customer complains and explain the issue. I try to help. 2.29 approaches. Me, to customer. Sorry, I have to take my mandatory break now. I'll speak with you in 30 minutes, and hang up the phone. Evidently, the customer called back, spoke to someone else, and put a complaint in place, which ended on M's hands. M calls me today, asking, Why are you so rude and unprofessional to the customer? That attitude is unacceptable, and I will be taking this to HR. Me, and tell them, what exactly? That you would threaten me to take my breaks at the correct second, and when I tried to explain the situation, you completely cut me off? I was following your demands, however unreasonable. You weren't willing to listen, so I acted according to your orders. M, regardless, I didn't mean you had to take it at the correct second. A few minutes either way would be acceptable. Me, that's not what you've said before, and I no longer wish to continue this argument. If you want to get HR involved, I'm happy to proceed. So now I'm waiting to hear from HR, to see what the next step is going to be. I have the evidence compiled that he ordered me to take my break at this specific time, but God knows what will happen. I sent an email to the HR lady I trust at the end of the day, and will approach them. Got a response from HR. I stated and showed the evidence that I was forced to take my break at the correct time, and the manager wouldn't listen to my reasoning. They found that to be unprofessional and will conduct an investigation, as they've had other people moan about different things. I have it in writing, would post but there's sensitive data on the emails, that I'll be transferred under a different manager, after I explained I now feel as though I'm being put under pressure and intimidated by the manager, so if I make any mistakes, I would be penalized. Any further complaints, this one will also be taken into account. The last story is, you told me to call the police. To set the scene, I had minor surgery in the morning. Kidney stones aren't fun, and decided that it'd probably be best to Uber to an appointment instead of drive. For most of the Uber drive, everything goes relatively peacefully. We're about two minutes out and everything has been going as expected. What I wasn't expecting was for some roided up stress head in a four-wheel drive to have an insecure masculinity meltdown. 
Traffic is a little backed up, and my Uber driver does a socially frowned upon, but not illegal maneuver, so we're stopped to let turning traffic have unrestricted access to his side road. Not something we have to do, as it's not an actual intersection. Uber driver notices that the guy in the right lane has done the same, because the gap in front of him is too small for his giant four-wheel drive. She indicates, takes that opening, and then is immediately honked at by the four-wheel drive. She looks confused at me, and asks if she did anything wrong. I shook my head. We're approaching the lights that cause the backup, and our emotionally stunted four-wheel drive owner speeds violently into the lights, right turning lane, screaming at us through his car, giving us the finger the works. I laugh. The Uber driver ignores. As we continue up to the lights going straight on, four-wheel drive owner slams his four-wheel drive into the straight lane, with no warning or indication, and slams his brakes on. It's worth noting that this was done at a well-surveilled set of lights. He's in front of us, and brake checks us again as we cross over the lights, and then he turns off onto the next side street. The side street I was going to get my Uber driver to drop me off on. I get her to go one street further up and U-turn, so as to not antagonize the clearly angry driver and give him time to get ahead. She agrees, does the U-turn, then turns onto the side street. Only guess what's at the entrance to the street? The four-wheel drive. My eyes roll into the back of my head as I realize there's a pretty solid likelihood this dude is going to come over and try to abuse us. The Uber driver drops me off and asks nervously, do you want me to hang around? But I shake my head. I get my phone out and hit record just in case. And sure enough, as my first steps down the street happen, Mr. I purchase large cars to make up for deficiencies elsewhere is coming over. He's Greek or Lebanese. I can tell right away. The clothes, the annoyed strut, the glasses, the skin tone. Sure enough, he starts right away being verbally aggressive, and his accent confirms my suspicions. For eight minutes, I let him go, complaining all about her driving. But when I bring up his own actually illegal actions, saying so what, he tells me he doesn't care if I'm recording, does the short man syndrome thing of entering my personal space and calling me tough because I'm big and telling me how hard he is for doing four years in prison, and then makes a fatal mistake. He tells me to call the cops. So I do. He's standing there riled up, a mixture of nervous and self-righteous energy. Except I tell the police immediately that I arrived at the location via an Uber and was being harassed. When I mention the word Uber, his head tilts, and when I explain his actions, as well as him admitting to them on camera, he looks surprised and then concerned, and then he runs to his car, but not before I can relay to the operator his license plate. Police arrive later, and I show them the video footage of the altercation. I didn't think anything serious would happen. Most likely just a fine, unless he's done this kind of thing before. Turned out he had done worse. He had been involved in a non-fatal hit and run, where the police were only able to get a description of the vehicle and of the driver. He was sentenced just last week, six months. Not much as it was his first offense. At least now when he tells folks he spent time in prison, he won't actually be lying. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you liked it, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.